English language teaching under the cover. Hello and welcome back to ELT under the covers. Today we are going to be doing another react video where we as English language teaching professionals we react to some classroom scenes and give you the good and the bad of what we think is happening there. But first introductions, I am Neil, the team teacher Thame, and I am with the rock and roll rich Radiant Chris on the floor bringing you the real deal. Here we go, kids. You ready? Hit that like button, smash subscribe, write a comment below. Tell me how good my hair looks today. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna give you the English language teacher's professional perspective. And we are reacting today to some Japanese idols. Do you know the name of these Japanese idols? Yeah. Who they are? Uh, their group is called Morning museum morning museum um <laughs> well I, I think it's, it actually says morning, morning as in like the time of day or morning as in yeah you know, past the time of the day, death the time of day. <laughs> but i thought i thought, I thought well i i looked at it and i i it, i thought i thought it was museum but it's actually musume so musume. morning mus, morning musume who's musume i don't know i guess it's a japanese word musume they're just waking up and, or something musume M masume, masume. I don't know. It probably means something. Morning masume. Okay, so what's the yeah. story? Morning glory. We're gonna. We're gonna <laughs> maybe that's what it is. It's the Japanese morning. Japanese word for morning <laughs> glory. <laughs> oh, I forgot what is it. Morning museo um, are in a classroom and they're got they're being taught apparently uh, to do how to do an interview in English or something musume. like that. Resume. A resume. Morning, musume. Uh, yeah. So they're, yeah. I think they're getting some tips on doing an interview in English, and also we're going to see an exam, kind of an exam thing. So we'll get some ideas about, you know, how you might um, give an an oral examination in the classroom, perhaps. <laughs> Double teachers. Ohayo, konnichiwa. Okay, so we've got the Cajun yeah. teacher. Is this is I'm saying that right? Cajun, not raging okay. Cajun, not not Gambit, but <laughs> oh, Gai Gaijan, Gaijan, Gaijan. Oh, Gai, was it Gaijin? The foreigner Gaijan, teacher. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> yep, American guy. Looks a bit like uh, Teacher Wayne. <laughs> teacher Wayne. <laughs> He's got his hair cut, hasn't he? Um, it's very white. Yeah. It looks like a prof you know, like a like a lab coat on or something. Yeah, that's true actually. Yeah. Is that what teachers wear in Japan? Lab I coats? think they've fired up the um the what you call it. Uh well, they're in a studio, aren't they? So they probably got studio lighting, which is, is, really is I thought Jeff Han was just an anime <laughs> world. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> There we go, a bit of a choral drill. How about that? So uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, this is something I used to do quite a bit, actually, and I think there's a fair amount of rationale for it. That um, when you're, if you're introducing or um, getting onto some language analysis, just a quick choral drill, just a bam bang, you know, uh, you know, uh, the elephant in the room, and everyone says it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and just that quick quick call drill and then move on. I'm not saying it's a pronunciation stage. I'm just saying it's a quick boom, you know, just keeping everyone engaged, give them a chance to exercise the mouth a little. Yeah. No, and, you I know, don't know what you think. Right that. Well, I, I, I do them quite a lot. And, you know, uh, uh, that is mostly because, you know, I've got young learners as well. So that is really oh, one yeah. way to kind of keep them engaged. But I, mm. I do variants on it. So, you know, I will have, um, I'll have different, uh, sorry, different uh, words on the board. Um, you know, I'll have a uh, robot 
or high or low and they do choral drills you know but with different uh intonations different voices you know they'll say robot a robot version would be like embarrass or they'll do a really high mm. embarrass or you know they've got to say it quiet or loud and you know it, it mixes things up they get to practice the word and also you kind of get to listen and go mm, actually maybe i need to come back to that and focus more on that especially when doing pronunciation uh later mm -hmm. yep that's it just a quick engagement takes two seconds <clears throat> and um and it's kind of almost you know, expected <clears throat> well I think, yeah to some extent i think it's a i think it's i think it's good um but not but not to think of it as a pronunciation stage mm -hmm. you know you're not really doing any <clears throat> you're not really doing anything considerable to help the pronunciation of the students of that just with a quick snap choral drill but those are the points that you made i think are good about engagement and just um all the rest of it well, it takes two seconds so it's fine like you say yes you know some students will be looking at the word and thinking how do you say that is it embarrass or embarrass or you know yeah all right so why not embarrass embarrass boom done okay well that's about all i can think of to say on that. <laughs> now now let's get into hopefully the really good stuff that's his feedback fantastic Fifth generation member. What is your Hazkashi story? Yeah, so uh, with idol groups, what happens is uh, they sort of start out with like five people. And that's called like the first gen or the zero gen. <clears throat> and then uh, they have like a recruiting stage and they just keep getting bigger and bigger. And that's why they end up with like 80 members <laughs> because they basically have like all oh, the generations. For, for, for my some reason, my idiot monkey brain was like, wow, this, this band's been going on a while. The, the, the great, 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 great <laughs> band daughter. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Let's take it that up. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a legacy thing. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. So, uh, so he's not a teacher then, I guess. He's just kind of like a prop. <laughs> and, um, and she's yeah, the it's teacher. Kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of looking that way, isn't it? He probably was a teacher, and then someone asked him if he wanted to be in a Japanese uh, program about idols, and uh, well, you got to pretend to be know? a teacher, and he's like, "Yeah, I can do that." <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your oh, hack? your story okay oh she's gonna reply um, in english but i think she's supposed to yeah all right so she's talking in japanese mm -hmm. this is what's considered embarrassing in japan by the way Oh, leaving an embarrassing your... story. Because leave... <laughs> I didn't your... think this. <laughs> yeah. you, you just clocked on to that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Monkey leaving brain. your umbrella opening open while walking under an arcade. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Japanese people. They're so funny. <laughs> it's like what's the most what's your embarrassing story well one time i left my umbrella open when i was walking under a shopping arcade <laughs> okay wow so embarrassing <laughs> like they'd be horrified by some of my stories then <laughs> yeah no exactly should we talk about the time that um i didn't get to the toilet in time <laughs> We are recording oh, left, this, Rich, by I the way. My... <laughs> oh, I was just, I was giving a, 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 a hypothetical Hi, hyper, example. Oh, hypothetical, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, oh, I've got a few, actually. In fact, we've told plenty of embarrassing stories on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're spicy on here. You know, we get under <clears> the <throat> covers, you know. It's the yeah, way it true, is. True. Yeah, anyway. I, 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 I hope 
Well, I assume that she has to tell this in English now. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Hopefully. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> okay, so this is funny, but uh, if you are a teacher, is uh, try not to laugh at your students' English. <laughs> it's, it's not good. It's not good. Sometimes, some it has. Has that ever happened to you? It, ha it does happen to me sometimes by mistake, um, and I, I, I always apologize for it. And um, you know, sometimes the students also find it funny, um, which is okay. Uh, but you do have to be careful with it. Uh, so the, the the time in particular I can think of is with idioms, and just when like people kind of get idioms slightly wrong or whatever, uh -huh. uh, you know, you do a class on idioms, and they're like, you know, I felt like a right elephant in the room, you know, <laughs> you just totally like misuse it or whatever, uh, you know, or um, I really wanted to be the squeaky wheel that got the grease, <laughs> just like, hmm, oh yeah, here's here's one. Uh, this this but this was actually in the speaking exam and I, and I and I didn't laugh obviously because I was the examiner, um, but there was a student and they were talking, and they'd obviously just learnt this by heart, uh, and they were like, um, um, last weekend I went to a party, and I had a way a lot of time. Oh, and I'm just like, okay, great. It sounds sounds like you really had a whale of a time. <laughs> I went to our party and I had a whale of a time. <laughs> so it's just a I find those situations of just slight misuse of idioms hilarious. Phrasal verbs can be another one as well. If someone just totally misuses a phrasal verb, uh, like they just say, like you know, I put down out of bed and I yeah. Uh, well, I think around. there's there's ones as well where it's they translate idioms from their own language uh, into yeah, English or, or you know like sometimes the stuff that they get wrong comes <clears> out poetically and I end up I end up adopting it you know like I told you that story about the the terrible Chinese guy that was misleading the innocent Japanese girl you know when my fly was down and he's like <laughs> whispering to her and she's kind of like okay 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 and she she flags me down and she's like uh teacher teacher the the mushroom is in the window <laughs> what are you talking about the mushroom <laughs> is in the window and my fly is down i'm like no way that you came up with that it was like yeah try <laughs> you know but i i laughed at that but it was because it was it was actually funny and yeah you know yeah. i apologized to her uh and you know told mr Choi for for not for being a very spicy boy <laughs> um but you know that was i it was pretty smart you know and mm. i'm funny i i i, I would yeah. definitely use that phrase again and again because it's <laughs> it's it's way it's way better than stuff that we have you know like the the mouse is out of the house yeah <laughs> like, what what is that the mushroom is in the window i'm yeah. like yeah that that you're sounds so much better you're flying low i think that's a good one yeah, yeah, you're flying low, no? Yeah, I just um, feel like uh, I really, the mushroom I really is in the like... window is 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 more vivid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's a little bit. Uh, it is vivid. It's, uh, it's almost graphic. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's. Um, I, I really don't like the Spanish one. I'm just trying to think what it is now. It's like uh, I see the. Oh God, what is it? I see the. Mm, I think they do use it. They use a creature for it as well, but I've never. It's never a creature. Yeah, yeah. A the creature. snake like is see, out of I the see top. The, I see the animal, some sort of animal, the little mouse or something. <laughs> 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 oh dear me. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Don't fly low in class, kids. Not a good idea. <clears throat> Yeah, it's just one of those. It's one of those things you get paranoid about as a male teacher, isn't it? And um, you sort of in the classroom, you sort of think, "Am I flying low?" And then you like don't want to look 
because you think if I look then the students will see me looking <laughs> what so you just kind of like awkwardly look away and grope around no, what just I, to, <laughs> just, what I just used to, check. to do I don't even know if I should say this what I used to do is uh, give them a task sit behind the desk and then sort of use my hand to check if the fly is uh, zipped up <laughs> which is kind that, of a I weird kinda, thing to yeah, do yeah but, um, can... but it's safer because it's safer because no one can see you going like huh <laughs> you know they uh, just see teacher a teacher under his, uh, putting his hand under the desk <laughs> I yeah, bet you the put the tongue guy, out yeah, as well. You're like, yeah, but your hands on your lap, you know, your hands on your whatever. It's, that's a whatever. Just keep thing, your hands it? up. Just I mean, there's no what. <laughs> yeah, uh, the best solution is not to have a fly. Actually, wear trousers that are just uh, just don't have a fly. And you don't have to worry about that problem. And get <laughs> oh god. Uh, yeah. Well, th this is where we talk about the inequality of uh, dress codes, isn't it? How if you're at an institution which demands. Um, formal wear and as a man you have to wear the shirt and trousers all year round but women get to wear the uh kind of formal dresses uh so you always sweat like crazy you know so have you ever been have you ever been like, did you have to wear a suit yeah i've worn suits yeah. um when i've done business classes and stuff like that because you know for some reason right. everyone thinks oh if you've got to do a business class you've got to dress in a suit right um mm. Yeah, it's it's really hot. But also, I've I've worn uh, suit, you know, like those jackets, sports jackets, because I've worked a lot in hot countries, and it always, you know, like you get sweaty, and it kind yeah. of, it's you, you know, if you get if you're someone that kind of gets that patchy sweat, um, mm. you know, you don't want the teach uh, the students are always like, oh, what's that, or what, you know, because in Asia they don't seem to sweat. I don't know why. <laughs> you have to have, you, when you have, I'm just you walking the, out and feel like I've been in a shower. You have to get the industrial strength uh, antiperspirant. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. So I just, Next I wore day, you, like, you've got, like, you're peeling like a layer of skin off your armpits. <laughs> uh, yeah. I should have just told people I was Scottish and just wore a kilt. I, per I personally... I personally... Uh, really like teaching in, in shorts and t-shirt um i know that there's an image perception thing but you know i don't know i think that the chilled out teacher especially communicative language teaching it makes sense doesn't it mm -hmm. shorts and t-shirt why not okay the open open top sandals you know it's fine flip flops all right that's pushing it a bit <laughs> <laughs> flip, flip flops and um your swimming costume okay that's crossed the line completely <laughs> But, um, how deep is that v-neck yeah. how tight are those pants uh, shorts <laughs> there's there's yeah. degrees that's it's, always a bad yeah. idea yeah tight tight trousers does not go well with teaching go for the loose ones hmm. okay I'll, I'll cut that out <laughs> <laughs> probably pro probably won't anyway um <laughs> let's no, let's uh let's move on let's move on <laughs> Move on. Everything we say is a joke, apart from the serious um, professional analysis. So you ever hit your students on the head? <laughs> no. Is that, is that a technique well, actually, you can use? No, maybe I have. Um, <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of want to see that again. Let's see his technique here. Good. Oh, sh he did. Yeah, yeah, he clopped yeah, on but the head you know with the, what? With the why would you? Why would you even do that? Just because? Uh, to first off. He's just saying, "All right, do it in English." He's obviously struggling. Uh, I know. I know this yeah. is 
folks we know this is generally for comedy purposes but if it were not for comedy purposes you know this would just be terrible teaching because they're just <laughs> obviously she's got to the front of the class in front of all of yeah. her peers uh, her Ooh. english is not that good <clears throat> and then or the he's only corrections and only help that he's giving her is whacking her on the head going english <laughs> like that somehow will be like oh that's what yeah. you meant when you first said to say it all in English. You meant it all in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> like she's somehow yeah. gone. Oh, oh I keep yes. she keep like she keeps forgetting that she should be speaking now English. Now I speak good English. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you meant good English. Okay. Ah, oh, I thought you just meant you know like throwing one word at a time. You want oh sentences. Oh, why didn't you say that? Mm. It's kind of a shame that he's not giving her a bit more guidance, isn't it? Yeah. That was pretty good, eh? Oh my god. His teaching is embarrassing. <laughs> is he really tall or is she short? It's a bit of a combination, I think. <clears throat> what is your embarrassed story? Why is your embarrassed? Embarrass? I know, yeah. Embarrassing? <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's almost like... Um, do you think he didn't want to correct the producers? They just come out with that thing, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, sure, okay, embarrassed story, whatever, that's correct." <laughs> yeah. Would you push back on that? Would you be? Would you yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. You, we, yeah. You would die on I that. Just, you would die on that hill, right? <laughs> I would. I just get fired though, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. You're like, okay, <laughs> we like need another, you know, white another monkey. Another guy. Jim. Yeah. <laughs> this guy hasn't got any hair. We don't want him. <laughs> He can't teach. He hasn't got hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it would definitely be something like that. <laughs> Samson. Embarrassing, embarrassing. A lot of teaching oh, is like yeah, Samson. Yeah. You need the longer the hair you have. <laughs> I think it's the opposite. <laughs> 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 well, he's having a good laugh, isn't he? <laughs> he's a famous Canadian, a com comedian. You, 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 you're right. He really does need to like uh, duck down to speak to them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now in English. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. Well, okay. It's good improvisation, I think. Yeah. All right. Contextually, oh, he said it's very good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, okay. Story Okay. is. Oh. This guy was definitely a teacher at some point though. He's doing he's doing things which indicate he was a he was a he was a language teacher. Like? Don't you think? Just this communication that he's having with her now, where he's like, who say? And he's doing like different things. Yeah, do you I think get, I, you... I get the feeling like he went to Japan and did like a year of language teaching and then like Oh yeah. Became an actor or something. I could totally I could totally see something like that. Yeah. 
Slang means an expression that can only be understood within specific groups. <laughs> Does it? Oh, I don't know. Is that, the right, is that the right word for slang? An expression that can only be understood within specific groups. I mean... That's like in-jokes, right? <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's any any language to some extent, you know? I mean, if you go to the, the US and you start talking about the bonnet of a car, they might have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I guess so. But, but, but bonnet isn't slang, is it? No, it's not slang. I don't know um, what what they're trying to describe, but it doesn't match up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and um, why why is she going around just reading slang? It's it's so weird. It's like a, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe she should yeah. be focusing more on you know getting the basics right rather than just yeah. Have you have you ever have you ever met a teacher who like really focuses on that kind of stuff? And it's like that's their big thing. Um, there's this fella cheeky chappy uh who who i uh, to be honest he wasn't i wasn't a friend he wasn't even really someone of mine i knew uh he's just someone who uh, is he just someone that you've made supported. up <laughs> so no no he's he supported the the same football team so i sometimes saw him at the games uh and he actually opened his own language school at one time what he was obsessed with um with like just i, th I think he was a bit of a uh, he was heavy on the ttt Oh, hey. He used to, you know, give classes and just uh, talk talk uh, people's heads off. And um, yeah, he was, he started doing these videos promoting his channel. And um, it was these; they were always expressions, right? And literally, like one of them that he does, it was like the third video or something. It was like the expression was um, "dry your eye," and he's like, for example, "Don't cry, dry your eye." And it's like, ah, okay. What? I've never even heard that. I don't I've even, never even I don't even, I don't even know if it's an expression, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's just something that dry he made up. Eye. Yeah, dry your eye. Don't cry, dry your eye. Um, that, uh, that's that's just weird. Yeah. What, you know, like, uh, I, <laughs> you, you do, I know they do, I've, I've not done them myself, but you know, schools that I've worked at uh, in Canada, they often have you know like um, conversate. So you'll do the you do the core book work in the morning, and then in the afternoons mm -hmm. there'll be basically a, a freer activity. Normally, it's like a conversation club or um, mm -hmm. the, a pronunciation club. But they also have um, like slang. Um, clubs um, and it's more just kind of like expressive language and you get a lot of people going to them especially those that are doing like mm. uh, IELTS and CAE uh, that sort of thing because they're wanting to kind of get more idiomatic more uh, you know learn more phrasal verbs and expressions mm. and stuff to kind of um, you know pepper in to their uh, language when they're doing exams yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe there's but nothing some dry your eye. Part, yeah, dry your eye. Dry no. your but eye. um, yeah, yeah. See, um, it's, I, I it's actually getting spicy again. <laughs> I actually deliberately um did a did a planned a class on idioms the other day because I avoid them, um, and I avoid them because I think they can easily be overused. They're very specific. You know, use them in specific circumstances. Uh, they can easily be be wrong, you know. But I kind of I wanted to kind of do a lesson on them to kind of dive into the the reason as to why they might be kind of useful. And I think mm -hmm. I did come up with some interesting ideas about um, about why idioms might be useful. For example, um, it's not even just about the idiom itself, but you actually also learn the words within the idiom. Mm -hmm. um, like um, there's there's certain Spanish words that I've learned from idioms. 
um like the the spanish expression for beat around the bushes is uh, something like no corramos por las ramas and um i learned the spanish word ramas from that uh-huh. uh, which which i believe my spanish is a bit rusty now but i believe it means something like branch mm-hmm. um right and i i i never you know that's how i learned that word i learned it from that idiom um so I think there is there is something to be said for idioms actually and I was trying to kind of rediscover that but I think it does have to be treated carefully um we definitely don't want to be you know teaching students you know oh look it's raining cats and dogs everybody but do you know what do you know I'll let you in on my approach with idioms uh-huh. um I don't do complete classes I use them as as fillers um or sometimes warmers sometimes finishes so at the beginning oh. or the end of the class and if i've got a bit of extra time i'll just throw throw one up on the board and be like what do you think it means oh. where's this come from uh, and actually my younger students not you know like the the little kiddies but you know the you know teenagers uh that i yeah. that i get they, mm-hmm. it's like a puzzle it, it, and you know some of the times oh. the the stuff that they come out with is is quite funny um okay. you know like where so they come like from guessing, it. Guessing yeah it's kind of it yeah it's a, and okay. because sometimes they have their own uh variation of the idiom because we, yeah. we all have it especially stuff like with you know like we say oh it's all greek uh to me right but you know yeah. in different languages they say oh it's i think it's <laughs> spanish it was like oh it's all chinese to me and right right, right. and it is it's funny um uh-huh, uh-huh. and you know like what what they come to they it's kind of like this situation where they say funny things like oh piece mm. of cake oh it's like you 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 eat the homework the homework is a piece of cake you eat, <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. i don't know so um I see, I see. they say they yeah. say funny stuff and it's and then they when i find i if i just throw it up and leave them to you know kind of figure it out they tend to remember it more because yeah. they're kind of well, you're, they're they're, with it. yeah and they're kind mm. of trying to put, fit it into their language uh, that, yeah. that, that they have and yeah. it, that's that's worked for me uh, yeah quite well yeah, sounds interesting, over the yeah. years just throwing it in at the beginning or at the end or you know like um so one finishes faster than the others you know i'll just mm. write a f- few down in their notebook and say oh can you mm-hmm. can you work this out or you know, do it with a friend and stuff yep yeah 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 i, I mean it sounds like a it sounds like a really good thing to just pull out the bag if you've got a couple of minutes left actually yeah. right here's an idiom for your kids uh, it was the kind of thing that they 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 kind of liked. They they were like, uh, "Oh, teacher, can we can we do the idiom guessing thing or whatever?" They didn't know they were called idioms. <clears throat> um, right. I just I called them expressions. I think. Uh, yeah. Because I, I you know you don't want to dive dive into well, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, just, but um, yeah. you know yeah. I would throw it up and be like, "You can use this word. Uh, you can use this to say something, but it doesn't mean yeah. the same." as uh-huh. the words on the board and they'd be like oh okay and yeah, yeah. they like that sort of thing <clears throat> along with uh that was one of my go-to's uh along with uh, another filler where it was um uh making i can't remember what we called i called it word snake <laughs> i think <laughs> nice. I nice. word snake and basically word you know snake. like you start with <laughs> um you know like two letters like at and then they add a letter and mm-hmm. you know they make they and they have to keep trying to expand it into a longer word and yeah. also you know you'll put a word on the board and it, it morphs oh what, what was it then? oh yeah uh you you have to say you can do it easy way long way so say for example yeah. you put on the word bad and I'm like, okay, yeah. now change one letter to make it into a new word. Oh and yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. bad to bad. Yeah. The, these are all fillers. Yeah. They all they all really yeah. love that sort of thing because it, <clears throat> that el- el- that element of you getting to play with the language and you know it being yeah. a puzzle, 
really engages you know yeah younger learners at i found and it's it's a decent little filler you know in case some activities have gone short uh, yeah. yeah oh you always you always need to have flexi tasks always um, always always and always. i i hate having extra worksheets <laughs> because yeah you know, forget extra worksheets I mean, it's minimize like it's worksheet. i would minimize just, worksheets you know, completely yeah. Mi- yeah worksheets are kind of a cheap fallback aren't they you know <clears> yeah <throat> you, i would just see it all the time you know especially with the, the mm. younger kids that everyone's always got like a uh, a word search or do you know like a <laughs> a, cr- a crossword I'm like yeah. what is, yeah. what oh yeah but it's it's yeah. fine because it's all the vocabulary that we've covered for the day mm. uh, yeah but you know no is it really is it really, is it really a good activity is it really really learning you know so let's get back into it let's get back into it we were just learning what slang is. This is a pen, Yeah. 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 For someone, you know, who's just starting to learn. Yeah. But she, so she learned that phrase, I want a kitty. Yeah, I think that's cool. And uh, her pronunciation is pretty good as well. Why yeah, not? no, it's, it's, it's all there the together. Basics, isn't it? Yeah, I want a kitty. Yeah, maybe she likes cats a lot. So I want a kitty. I want a kitty. Yeah, okay. It doesn't it mean it's it's not too difficult to go from I want a kitty to I want a car or something, is it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, well, I suppose if that's what helps her remember the phrase i wouldn't call i wouldn't call it slang is no. kitty slang yeah but just you know little, it's, little it's little the the wanna right you know people will be like oh that's 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 slang it's not i want i want uh, that kitty. definitely not no yeah one one is correct connect correct pronunciation is that's what i teach yeah but when people write it's when people write it down oh. they're like uh Ooh. yeah i suppose yeah ah uh, right right you're right you're right yeah we kind of teach it like a separate word to. when it's 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 right. not and well, i think there's some argument to say that it should be uh, oh, just really? like can't and yeah just like can't and won't and you know shouldn't like why do we contract them but we don't tr- contract wanna and gonna and and even I, I even think things like you know must musta shoulda woulda coulda all these things shoulda woulda like, coulda Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. I mean, do they need? Do they need to be? If we if we contract can't, um, won't, and you can even you can even contract I'm or aren't. So you can say uh, or wait, you, your or aren't. Like you can say you're not, or you can say you aren't. So you have all these ways of contracting things, but for some reason, we don't want to contract. Well, you're not anymore. wearing a mask. That's why you're contracting everything. That's true, actually. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Pandemic humor. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I teach. I teach maskless English. <gasps> what mask maskless English? How dare which you? Which is please dot com or send an email to uh, professorrich at gmail dot com to get a list of my rates, which are exclusive for premium level teaching. They're greats. Great rates, rates. Okay, sorry. This is a bit of a divergence. Okay. Angry. Angry. Did a little double double choral then, didn't they? Yeah. So she's she's really into this. She's uh-huh. fifteen. Yeah, allegedly. So they, these idols are That's really the characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. She's just graduated. Well, she's she's thrown her hand up, so she's probably going to blow our minds with her incredible English, right? That's okay. what I'm expecting. I mean, that's what you expect when you see a student like that in the classroom, right? They, they they're volunteers. They want to show off how good they are. Oops. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. I guess not. Kito. Kito, English. Kito. English. Oh, hit. Oh, English. That works. Just keep saying English. <laughs> Just keep saying English and whacking someone in the head. So, um, from teacher teacher perspective, the thing that he was doing there, where it kind of goes, people, 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 people. Um, <clears throat> it's quite difficult. Um, I think sometimes as a communicative language teacher to both fill the role of communicator, but also fill the role as a teacher. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, it's like as a communicator, you always want to, you always want to the community, you, you, you invested to make the communication a success, which is what he's then doing by saying people, 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 right? He's going, oh, here is a way that you could explain this to me with this one word in English that you know. There's a lot of people, oh, you can just say people, 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 right? And he's kind of, he's feeding it, right? And that's, as a communicator, that's a really good thing to do. But then you have to wonder, is it a good thing to do as a teacher? Are you spoon feeding? Are you doing the work for them? Should she be the one who's working out, you know, these techniques for herself, how she can best use her limited language to express herself? Yeah, because, you know, the other girls were, they, did, <clears throat> were they, they, were, they were trying and they were doing their best um, with what limited English yeah. that they have and, you know, yeah. I'd be happy to just keep encouraging them to, to. I think it's just to just try. Obviously, you know, like he's doing absolutely no leg work with teaching English. <laughs> he's just yeah. shouting English at them. But um, with regards to what you're saying, it's it depends. I think within the context of the uh, the situation, you know, like if you're I mean, I, as if you're just focusing on the communicating and you're just trying to be like oh okay so this is a way that you could try to you just kind of like feeding back people 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 because you mm. he, he's almost like he's reacting rather than communicating all people like there's lots yeah but i think uh it's just solely at that level uh, as teaching i wouldn't even say that that's i wouldn't even say that that's teaching at all you know mm. uh, unless you're kind of like trying to point that out as so she realizes that that's something that she could do i just don't i don't think that that's that's happening and i don't think yeah. he's helping whatsoever yeah 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 um how much more do you want to watch of this i think we've kind of got the idea of uh it. yeah um, kind of i'm i'm not super keen on it yeah you know these shows where they're kind of reacting to you know broken english or stuff you know right. because they they think it will be funny when someone tries to yeah. speak english and mm. you know it, it they they say it wrong and then we all laugh at that and stuff mm. i mean it's fun to it's fine to kind of do that especially when within a culture where you don't want to be wrong at, at all you know to mm. make it uh, open so everyone can kind of make mistakes mm -hmm. but you know it, mm -hmm. it gets to a point where it starts it's i mean with that one it was just starting to feel icky with me yeah and i'm just like yeah. it kind of just feels exploitative yeah a little bit yeah it was wasn't it yeah and yeah, not, not particularly helpful maybe yeah no no i mean yeah. you know everyone's and then it's just gonna be, it can't it gets to a point where it starts to reinforce we like oh my english is bad and i say what I say in English, everyone's just going to laugh at it, and you know, 
then they just yeah. it kind of they add a ceiling where you're like well I, it's never going to get any better so you know yeah. I'll just do this and we'll just all laugh at it and when you know it's surprisingly easy to you know improve with a bit of consistency and you know yeah uh, yeah a bit of effort it's it's not that difficult <clears throat> yeah uh, you know yeah 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 i agree and i, I think you ne you ne kind of nailed it before when you were talking about you know getting up in the front of the class it's always a risky thing isn't it getting students up in front of the class i yeah. think if you do it it needs a lot of preparation um you yeah can't just, you why can't would just you do it. yeah yeah just get someone or this cut the whole coming to the front of the class unless you are prepared and you're doing a presentation why would you even do that yeah yeah doesn't make any sense yeah that's right even just from like a a, a time perspective you know the walking mm. to the front and the back yeah. and you know you yep. just have it do from their seats if you really insist on doing something like that but uh, yeah, an interview in, in in English. I don't think there was uh, anything <laughs> that we could take from that for uh, how to help a Japanese idol uh, do an interview in English. I'm not yeah. sure what. I mean, let's let's think about this. What would you say? Someone came to you, you know, uh, one of your hollow livers or. Uh, you know some other idol group from whatever country and they mm. they're wanting to do like a quick short course of kind of uh you know some to to be able to kind of like i don't know say something in english you know for interviews or something like that you know what would your approach sort of be do you know i remember uh, in spain we had that we had there was a, a period of time where we're like uh, where our spanish wasn't that great so um our, our, i remember our spanish teacher um she would uh give us like the abair and you know all these kind of tactics to kind of give <clears> us <throat> a little thinking time uh, and i always appreciated that nice. because that yeah. helped me kind of like think things over you know uh, and i and that was what came to mind when you know I was asking you, well, what would you teach? You know, maybe that would be something that would be really helpful for for these guys uh, if they've already got a little bit of English. You know, some way yeah. to kind of add a little delay so they can think about what they're going to say next. Or, what well, I mean, mm -hmm. how would you approach it? Yeah, I mean, if you assume that you it needs to be done in the shortest possible time, <clears throat> first of all, that's always a bad bad thing. I think. Um, yeah. it's a terrible way to look at improving language is to say uh, I've got this thing in three months time or you know it's normally sooner isn't it oh, I've got a job interview in three weeks I need some lessons <laughs> because what you what you end up doing or what I certainly did when I got that stuff uh, in Spain when I wasn't very experienced is um, we would just sort of go through interview questions and practice and practice mm -hmm. and what you find happens is um, uh, they tend to start sounding very kind of robotic and monotonous answering yeah. the questions mm -hmm. right saying the same things almost reading from a mental script mm -hmm. and it's not it's not good you know unless unless you're like an actor who's really good at that mm -hmm. then um, then it, it doesn't it doesn't work particularly well so first of all, I, I'd say you want to probably avoid that situation as much as possible. The, any any sort of time constraint that's put on a language learning goal, um, unless it, you know it has to be realistic. It should be set by the teacher, really. Mm -hmm. The teachers would say, "Look, okay, so what do you want to do? Okay, you want to get a seven point five in IELTS. Okay, let's do let's do a mock exam, right? You do that for homework. Come back to me. Okay, so you've currently got you know a six, right? So." if we do X amount of classes a week for X number of weeks and you do all the homework, then we can expect you to get to a seven, you know, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. where it's set by the teacher, not where it's a student saying, Oh, I've got, I mean, I don't know if you ever had this in Spain where you had a teach, uh, student come to you and just be like, Oh yeah, I've got the first certificate exam next month. <laughs> and it's like, Oh really? Okay. And uh, you, I can see that you're speaking at like a B1 level. So <laughs> uh, we'll do what we can to, 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 to to you know give you a chance of passing by a look shall we say um 
which isn't going to happen anyway. <clears throat> you have to be very lucky. Um, so, yeah, it does. It, I, 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 my my approach would be, I, I'd probably be honest with them and say, look, you know, you need you need more time. You need to delay this thing or whatever. And if it was a case of you know, gun to your head and saying, look, you've got, uh, I don't know, three hours to teach this person how to <laughs> pass an interview, then I think I would be tempted to try to teach them uh, like improvisation um, and communication techniques rather than actually focusing too much on the language. Okay. Um, so just gen just general kind of ideas about uh, kind of pushing through, you know, almost like when we watched uh, Miko from Hollow Live, mm-hmm. uh, you know, doing the freedom lady, you know, she was, you know, she's really trying with her very, very limited English. Yeah. Um, you know, because it can be that, endearing, definitely. It can be endearing, and you know, it. Um, you can be a good communicator. There is such a thing as being a communicator. You know, uh, you can you can communicate with to with someone without knowing a single word of their language. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, normally the situation is not that dire. So I think I would probably go somewhere down that way. You know, using words, using ex- ex- expressions with your hands, and. Um, and maybe, maybe I would go a bit into uh, paraphrasing. It would depend on what level they, of English they have. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they had enough to sort of get to grips with some, uh, you know, it's the thing that you put on your head or, you know, it's the place you go to get money or whatever, you know, right. if they can handle that, then maybe I would go into that kind of stuff. Basically trying to teach the coping techniques rather than, rather than focusing on um, he is the specific vocabulary that might be useful to you in an interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think, I think that would be, that would be the best approach long-term. Yeah. You know, if you've, if you're like, okay, I've got, you've got 18 months to teach this person how to um, do a good meet. When we say interview, we're talking about a media interview, aren't we? Not a job interview. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, you've got 18 months to teach this person then, okay, then, you know, yeah. Role plays, useful vocabulary you do all everything right but if it's a limited time then i think coping coping mechanisms would be my focus yeah definitely um to expand on your fantastic groundwork i would even say uh, one of the things that i always try to um, reiterate with my students is uh, the answer is often in the question so really listen to the structure of the the question you know what do you like all you have to do is throw in your own pronoun i like you know replace the what with the the pronoun and you've got the structure there so you're just repeating back and then you just have to throw in a a noun or whatever (laughs) so you cannot if they kind of think that way it's they, they've got a, a starting point of where to move yeah. from uh, uh, to at least put it in a sentence or they can just you know throw in you know whatever noun that they've got come to mind but also what i was thinking as well that it would be very dependent on where is the <coughs> the media interview what is it about because uh, right. i would be tempted to prepare certain phrases um, the word endear you uh, or just certain vocabulary that you can kind of throw in for bonus points so do you know like if they're doing a media interview with you know Jimmy Kimmel in America you know they can say I like America they could do a sentence like I like America because and just say something American because of American pie or you know what I mean so they just kind of um you can kind of uh-huh. talk a little bit what you like about the culture and you know at, at least if it if your english is not good it shows uh uh that you've done research or you've done something to you know yeah familiarize yeah, I mean, we're get, yourself we're getting into what you might call sort of gen- general interview techniques there right which is I, yeah. I agree as well is 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 something it would be a good way to go yeah a good way to go yeah. Um, but you, when, thing about but when you're doing it, the English the interview in English, I think what we're getting at really here is that you you can't learn 
English in a short period of time to be able to properly do an interview. So you're basically just trying to find quick ways to communicate or to answer a better answer the question with what limitations that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There's the, the, the main, the main lesson really is, you know, language t learning cannot be rushed. No, it, it really can't, you know, because you could study 20 hours a day mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's a different thing because it's so practical, you know, it's a different thing than learning, you know, um, physics or something not that i'm saying you you know 20 hours of physics a day would make much faster progress either but um i think to some extent it would do than language because language really has that sort of practice and then sleep and it sinks in and then you know how when you try something for the first time and maybe for like two hours you're absolutely terrible at it and then you go to bed and you get up the next day and suddenly you're better have you ever yeah. had that experience you know, yeah. uh, it's it's especially it's very very noticeable when you do something for the first time, like if you play an instrument for the very first time or pick up a game controller. You've never played a video game before, and it's it's like hands all over the place. I've never had that experience because I grew up with the damn thing, but I've seen people have that experience. Hands all over the place, can't use it. Then the next day they pick it up and they're suddenly better. You know, it's like you've had that practical process. The mind has kind of gone chugged through it. Um, and that happens a lot, I think, with language teaching and, and with learning an instrument. You know, the, the ultimate um, the ultimate parable, I think, of language teaching is, le is language learning, is learning an instrument. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it just it can't be rushed. And I think as, as, as teachers, I think the best approach is to be honest about that. Um, unless you're just trying to get money from your students. Um, you know, if you're if you're thinking about being an effective teacher, just give it to them straight just yeah. tell them yeah know. and um you know so if they if someone if these celebs these idols came to you and said oh we've got to do an english interview we uh we want to learn english to do this english interview you know like you said it should be the, well, i'm not going to teach you english i'm going to teach you to do this interview and yeah. we're going to give you yeah. some that's it you know techniques to to do that and i i feel it's yeah. very it's it's a similar approach to when you're teaching first certificate or ielts you know, the courses i often are like so short like a month you're like you're not gonna move up a band um solely based on your english we're basically going to be teaching you how to do the exam and mm -hmm. that's basically yeah. trying to maneuver your english into the structure that's you know fits with what they want in the IELTS yep. or the first certificate or whatever your whatever certification that you're doing yeah and i think it's be, you got to be I, I i am always really clear about that because yeah. you know everyone's focused uh, everyone focused on improving english um and when it's this sort of certification or doing interviews it's not really about that it's not a, it's more about what you got and how can we use that <laughs> you have to yeah uh yeah especially if you've got a time constraint if someone comes to you without a time constraint then, then that's a whole different um, ball game yeah. yeah different ball game and it's um and and, and the approach then is get the let get the english to the level first and yeah. then teach the exam yeah this is yeah. uh <laughs> I, I use an analogy when i'm like it's like uh layering a cake you know, if we have the time, you know, we can we can do the cake from scratch. If we don't have time, then you know we're doing cake from the box. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just so it's means gonna be, it's it, going to be a shit cake, basically. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's still going to be tasty, but you're not going to have any idea of to you know like how to make a cake in the future. You're you're uh -huh. always going to be solely reliant on the box. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And yeah, for many people it doesn't matter. I, I had a, a a friend come to me the other day, and she was like, uh, uh, "I've got to retake my IELTS again because you know a lot of my friends are immigrants into Canada, like myself. Um, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm native speaker, 
and, mm-hmm. and she isn't and she's like I, I, I'll pass the IELTS she just thinks she's going to do general uh, I'll pass the IELTS easy because you know her English is fantastic but she's always got I think it was like a, a 6.5 or 7 in writing and all her others is like eights or nines and it bugs her it bugs her that her uh, her writing she's always getting like 6.5 or 7 and Uh I literally straight up said to her does it matter (laughs) 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 are you happy with your writing and she's like I'm happy with my writing but Uh I just you know I want that higher grade and I'm like it doesn't matter at all outside of IELTS no one gives a shit Uh if you've got uh, an 8 or 9 apart from you so yeah I can give Mm -hmm. you some tips yeah I can help you and you can put in that work Uh, well she's doing general right? so it's not even academic so I'm like you can you can put all that time and effort in and you know get that little higher score and you know Mm -hmm. get rid of that that feeling but you know, you could use that time to do learn something yeah. new. You know, yeah, they're it's... pretty pretty synthetic skills, aren't they? Um, the the writing, specifically the writing. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, if you're academic, unless, unless you're going, going to study into... at university, yeah. And that's that's always one of my problems with the IELTS academic writing is I'll get people going into like art school, <laughs> and they've got to do these you know like uh, mm, academic writing yeah. it's yeah. it's as yeah. soon as well, that's, as soon yeah. as you kind of like standardize well I'm not standardize the right words as soon as you kind of like make rules then yeah. it just becomes so broad it yeah. doesn't take into account you know like a large majority of these people that are not going to right. technical schools you know they're yeah. they're doing sports <laughs> I, I i would actually i'd partly put that down as the fault of the university you know it's like if you if you're a university you have to set the requirements for the course so if you're setting ielts as a requirement then you know you have to be aware of what it consists of and if your course is art or something and you know well that's if you're the one who has to consider that uh, there's other exams you could accept you know you could you could accept the trinity exam which is purely a spoken exam yeah um you know there's all kinds of things there's ways around it so and i, I know, do know I, to, to be fair i do know universities that are like um you know if you got a six or a 5.5 in ielts they would look at the individual scores and be like um, oh okay your yeah. your speaking is great and everything right, right, right. but your writing is shit but you know yeah yeah your yeah. the course yeah, doesn't need be, it that so. would probably be more of the way to do it yeah um, ironically, I think that um, the writing is the one I think you can actually improve the fastest, just out of just out of interest. Um, oh, definitely. I think, That's where I focus I think, a lot on. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's where you can gain a lot of marks, isn't it? You know, because initially someone comes and they they don't know how to write an essay or whatever. Yeah, you know, but you that's know basically it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause and you've, you've got, you've also got, you've got lots of language chunks you can just teach to be like rote language chunks that are always always going to come up you know on the one hand on the other hand firstly secondly thirdly finally you know to sum up it's, these things you could use them in like basically every essay you've ever written right exactly and um and one of the areas they mark on is um i think i think they, they ever call it coherence and cohesion yep uh, or something like that but it's um, coherence you know, and cohesion yeah it's based that's basically discourse markers you know it's yeah. just using discourse markers that makes sense yeah mm. yeah um so you know i mean that's like one example of where i focus on but i think it's also an example of going back to what we've previously watched of you know teaching for the kind of context and not necessarily teaching english just you mm. know, this is what we can do to maximize what you have um and it's it's interesting but i really don't like uh as you say when people like market that they're going to you know super boost rocket your english in one month you know so you can pass whatever it's not gonna yeah. it's 
it's that, the, it's, that's, the, that's, it's that's the not obvious... what they're doing. They're not yeah. teaching you English. They're teaching yeah. you techniques and uh-huh. yeah. I don't even know what they're teaching. I think they're I just know. trying to get you to buy their English class. Yeah, it's the it's the obvious kind of marketing trick, isn't it? Yeah, the the speed. Tell people that you've got the fastest method. <laughs> yeah. Well, I say yeah. boo to them. I say boo to I mean, them. What yeah, do you say to I mean, them? Imagine people out there do you have any experiences with this you know leave comments we'd love imagine, to know. Uh, uh, imagine if someone come along and, and like you know uh and, and was like i will teach you to be a professional football player in three weeks you know you just be like what the hell are you talking about and that's basically what we're talking about or not professional but let's say you know i'll teach you to be a league one football player in three weeks yeah you know really uh, you know, for someone who like maybe has never played football before, <laughs> you know, you'd, of course you just think that's ridiculous. If you could do that, you'd be a billionaire. You wouldn't be like you wouldn't have some dodgy language center in the corner of some what, street you know, in like the the dodgy district. As soon as you said that, it reminded me of a, a TV show. I can't remember <clears throat> the name of it, but um, it was uh, like a job swap show. So basically, they would take someone. Uh, who's got one occupation and then they would try in a month to mm-hmm. teach that person to do a different job um, mm-hmm. but the the jobs are kind of similar I'll give you an example in a second but it was interesting yeah. how some how successful some could be so for example nice. they would take they took a, a painter decorator and mm-hmm. in the month they got him to you know uh, sell high end paintings Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. uh, you know, like a, a, he had his own art show and stuff like that, and he was able to pass mm. as an a, an actual artist just within a month. Mm. And yeah. you know, the, the, yeah, he's got he's got the base, and he kind of yeah. kind of feels similar. So I think that I think that's a lot of it. You know, it's this kind of um, this kind of where domain specific skills can overlap. Yeah, right. I think that's where things kind of um you you can get you can see that kind of thing happen you know it was like oh but i've never sold anything before in my life yeah but you know you're a decorator you know you know a bit about this sort of stuff you know you, you it's not all completely new to you and i really think this is one of the things that's going on you know when people think like oh i can't learn a musical instrument i'm just not a musical person no no Oh, oh, my friend, he picked up guitar and he just picked it up so easily. And for me, it's so difficult. Yeah, it's because there's domain specific skills that are overlapping for him that you don't realize. So maybe, you know, he um, maybe he played a lot of video games. So he's got some sort of finger dexterity going on. Right. Maybe he um, listened to a lot of classical music when he was a six year old. So he can identify different tones. You know, there's all kinds of like very it's not always that obvious domain specific skills that could be overlapping it's not necessarily that there's an innate talent there yeah uh, apart from potentially um iq you know learning rate that's a different matter but but yeah um i i don't i don't think there's such a thing as not a musical person unless you actually have uh, you know a a, a, to- a complete physical uh ailment where for example if i go do do you like can't hear the difference between those two sounds you know but then i would imagine you'd have all kinds of other issues it reminds well. me of what you were saying about the <clears throat> the romance languages where you're like oh my friend she speaks like four languages and it's like yeah. okay uh this they they grew up speaking spanish and the <laughs> yeah. other two languages they speak are italian and portuguese yeah no no it's It'll not be like <laughs> spanish portuguese uh italian and catalonian <laughs> yeah and like wow this person knows four languages or you know when, when you come across like a swiss person and you know they they're so close to the borders that it, it's it would be yeah. odd if they didn't know a little of all these different <laughs> yeah, languages. Right. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's way. I think I kind of feel it's way more impressive to be something to learn another language outside of your. Um, what would you call it? What do they call them? The, the language category. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, My yeah, bigger language, question: a language that's very difficult, different than your own. You mean, is um, it's very difficult. Team America. 
Gary. Gary is an actor, yet he plays action stars uh, in lots of different <laughs> movies. So he was uh, <laughs> employed by Team America because he had all the skills. Because uh, <laughs> what as an actor he's you know he's basically been playing a spy a secret agent mm. so therefore can't, why can't he just do that in real life? Mm. Yeah. Uh, what what at what point is it <laughs> these overlapping skills? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I, I I think there's a maybe. lot to be said about um, especially when it's uh, soft skills, you know, like uh-huh. like sales where you can kind of just translate oh or even you know when we're uh, as teachers going into teachers to them you know doing presentations or talks is often a yeah, lot yeah, yeah, easier totally. for us so i think there's i think there's a massive overlap there yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um i think actually i think lots of teachers uh, go into jobs where they use those communicative skills or teaching skills yeah if they go into a one later mm-hmm. but they they don't think about that I don't think I don't think many people think about communicative skills in general because it's it's can be so difficult to teach outside of a a language context. Uh, like how do you how do you effectively teach someone to be a good communicator? Yeah. W- without the context of uh, you know learning it through a language. Yeah. Then it, there's lots of snake oil out there doing that oh, sort yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we're getting into it. So follow up on our next <laughs> video <laughs> where we teach yeah. you how to communicate effectively. So not just, you know, find the woman or the man or the animal that you love, but uh, how to make them love you as well in only three days. Three days. <laughs> three days. Has- three hashtag days. ELT under the covers, three-day method. <laughs> We yeah, get you just, uh, and them under the covers. <laughs> £29,000 for the three-day course. Learn like a pro. Yes. With Rich and Neil. All right. So tweet uh, it out, guys. Hashtag three-day method. Uh, we'll be watching those tweets. Do we have a Twitter yet? Um, do we have a Twitter? Check out our Instagram for the spicy memes. Yeah. And... Um, I've been Neil of Team Teacher. Remember to check out teamteachchina.com for a whole bunch of materials, PowerPoints that you can use instantly in your classroom to be an instant better teacher. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I said that. (laughs) Don't even need days. It's just instant. It's just instant. Get the materials and boom. Just throw it up there. It's I, kind of I didn't teaching know how to yourself. Teach English, and now I do. <laughs> exactly, that's how it is, and Amazing. I don't apologise for that. And we've taken all those <laughs> lessons, uh, <laughs> and we've put them into video format as well for Team Teacher English, where you can instantly have a lesson with me uh, mm. going through a video, uh, and just you know instantly <laughs> learn right. that you know I'm full of shit with. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Team Teacher English, they're good for following good on techniques. with the materials that we have uh, to uh, give us homework or for self-study, uh, <clears throat> etc. especially for kids. And we have Team yep. Teach Baby where I instantly get my <laughs> build my teaching into parenting and I'm running out of instant coffee you, you, so i'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna pass you, this over to rich you uh you you use your knowledge as a teacher for being a good dad right so you do like pronunciation drills with your kid right instantly that 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 that, that no no da i'm gonna d, use some techniques okay, from da, today and d, you know it's d. hit English. <laughs> English. <laughs> English, English, come on. You just need Duck. to hit someone over the head with a sentence. With a English. <laughs> piece of paper until they can speak English, especially if they're a small child. Or, uh, how old's your son now? 20 months? 21 months. Oh, he's getting up to the big two. The big, the the big, big two. O2. Yeah, the big O2 where, you know gonna there's gonna be a lot of disappointment in the family if he's not completely fluent 
<laughs> in seven languages. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And All what right, about you, Rich? And, uh, well, my name is Professor Rich. You can find me at youtube.com slash Professor Rich, where I do weekly live streams. Um, Fantastic live streams. Ask questions live. Yeah, they're the best live streams you've ever seen in your life. In your instantly life. Instantly in your you... <laughs> You can instantly ask questions, receive an instant answer, and instantly improve your knowledge in either the areas of English language or English language teaching, or, you know, just general philosophy. If you just want to be a better person, come to youtube.com slash professor or reach. You can learn in three days. That's what that business is becoming. Um, it's now, it's now philosophy. Yes. Um, yeah, you've got that. You've also got uh, Profits Gaming, where I will be doing uh, live streams of um, gaming gaming content. You have to do a search for that one. I haven't got uh, YouTube. Haven't given me a, a URL yet. Do we have a URL for this channel yet? When do we get that? Um, I don't know. I, don't know. I think we should have got but, it instantly. But... Yeah, yeah, we should have got it instantly. <laughs> because if you go to youtube.com slash Profits or Reach, you can instantly get to that channel. You know, you don't need to search and then click to instantly get to this channel. You don't even you need to uh, load here. up YouTube. It's just yeah. it's just there as soon as you open up your computer with the thought recommend... of Professor Rich in your mind. <laughs> That's right. I'd also recommend to anyone, particularly anyone who's watching this part of the video, I imagine everyone stopped watching by now, but um, if anyone's still watching, <laughs> I would highly recommend that you check out our uh, Jamie Keddy interview, uh, the pro, the pro, the storyteller, yeah uh, fantastic uh go check out go check that out if you want to instantly become a better storyteller yeah and i actually think of all the the mockery we made of uh instantly you know doing his course will actually instantly make you uh, yeah. a better storyteller no doubts about that so Definitely. smash that like button hit subscribe you will instantly become a subscriber <laughs> I'm gonna. I've got. Write we've got to leave down it on below, that. down below. Smash the do button, the done button. The message will instantly appear below this video. Do it. Yeah. Bye bye.